Hello class, today we're going to start reviewing over chapters 6 and 7 to prepare for the test. Again, this is photosynthesis and cellular respiration. So first we have the introduction to photosynthesis um, and we'll go through some of these definitions and terms and how we get um, photosynthesis to happen. So to start with here, autotroph. An autotroph is something that can make its own food. So an example can be plants. Um, bacteria can be as well and algae, but we mainly just talked about um, plants. And um, sometimes they're called chemosynthesizers, so they don't have to just be photosynthesis type plants um, or organiza organisms. They can be chemosynthesizers where they take chemicals from the atmosphere and turn them into usable energy. So. The photosynthesis equation is carbon dioxide plus water plus light and that produces sugar or organic molecules plus oxygen. You do need to know the equation and understand it, uh, so make sure you look back over that and understand what each of these things stands for. So a lot of you during um, worksheets and things, I noticed instead of carbon dioxide, you wrote carbon plus water plus light, and that's not correct. Make sure that you know that it is carbon dioxide, it's what we breathe out, and then plants give um, out sugar, organic compounds, and then they breathe out oxygen. So that kind of answers questions two and three there. Explain how scientists discovered the process of photosynthesis. So we had three scientists that really helped in this process. Um, John Van Helmont, and he discovered that plants need water. And then Joseph Priestley said that plants release oxygen, and he did that whole thing with the plant or with the um, candle under a um, covering, and the candle would go out. But if you put a plant in there with the candle, the um, plant would be releasing oxygen to the candle and it would continue to burn. And then John Ingenhaus, um, he discovered, he took that experiment just a little bit further and discovered that um, if you put that same setup in a dark area, the plant would not be releasing oxygen. So um, plants need light as well. All right, so if we look at the light reaction, um, we're going to take some time to go through and look at the reactants and the products. So first here, describe the pigments of light. So pigments of light is just looking at our visible spectrum. And um, the visible spectrum is a part of the full electromagnetic spectrum. The visible spectrum is just a tiny little section in the middle of the electromagnetic spectrum. Um, autotrophs use um, the green light a lot of times that's kind of mainly what they reflect and we have chlorophyll that or they have chlorophyll that absorbs that the other colors in the fall we'll see the pigments change and we'll start to see the reds and the yellows come out because chlorophyll stops functioning um, explain why trees have green leaves that change color in the fall so that's just what I was talking about there so the pigments in the leaves are the chlorophyll stops working basically and that allows for the other pigments to be uh, reflected or what we see. Um, distinguish between the parts of a chloroplast. So you need to look back over the parts of the chloroplast. You, sh you have a couple drawings um, and you also had a color sheet that you did. Um, so we had thylakoids and these contain um, the uh, chlorophyll Um, grana are stacks of thylakoids. Stroma is the fluid that's inside there. Um, I think that's pretty much all we had. Chlorophyll uh, is the absorbing pigment. Okay, what are the reactants and products of the light reaction and where does the light reaction take place? So the light reaction um, happens in the chloroplast and specifically it happens in the thylakoid 
because it's where we're absorbing light. So um, in order to have this process happen, it has to be able to absorb light, and that happens in the thylakoids where the chlor um, chlorophyll is. Um, if we look at the reactants and the products, um, the reactants are going to be what goes into the um, light reaction. And so reactants here are going to be H2O and light. Okay, and then the products are going to be what goes into the dark reaction. So it's not the whole ending of photosynthesis, it's just what will be carried over. So we have CO2, which gets released from the chloroplast and from the plant. Um, we get ATP, we get NADPH, and we get H+, which is just hydrogen. These things here go to the dark reaction. All right, chemiosmosis is basically an electron transfer, um, which you would have seen in that uh, energy diagram you did on the virtual lab. But chemiosmosis is going to be um, the making or synthesis of ATP, which occurred here. We have ATP that's there. Okay, so that is the light reaction part one of photosynthesis. Part two of photosynthesis is called the Calvin cycle or dark reaction. Um, so why is it also called the dark reaction? It does not need light to function. It does need the light reaction to have already happened, but it doesn't actually need light for it to happen. So the reactants here are the things that came from the uh, light reaction. So we, um, we get the ATP, NADPH, and the H+. Plus. Um, but we also get um, CO2 that comes out. And you know what? I think I wrote the wrong thing on that past slide. Let me go back there real quick. Um, I put CO2 and it should be oxygen. So right here it should have been O2. Sorry about that. Just a little mistake there. Okay, so the dark reactants, dark reaction reactants, um, three things came from the light reaction here. And then CO2 is there as well. The products at this point are going to be kind of our final products of photosynthesis, which will be some oxygen and then um, the organic molecule, which is generally sugar, um, as how the formula is C6H12O6. Um, where this occurs, so if you're looking at um, your dark reaction information. Um, it will still happen in the chloroplast, but it happens in the stroma of the chloroplast. Okay, carbon fixation is taking carbon atoms and bonding them. into organic compounds. And that process happens here in the dark reaction. Three things that affect the rate of photosynthesis. And this is um, kind of why leaves change color in the fall if we look at these three things. So light intensity, and we'll go over what is ideal. So with light intensity, um, if we were to look at a graph of photosynthesis versus the light, um, you would see that it would increase its um, ability to do photosynthesis up to a point, and then it would just level off. So there's not like, um, there's kind of a max amount of light that actually helps increase photosynthesis. Carbon dioxide levels is also one, and it has a similar um, graph. It eventually will just level off at the amount of carbon dioxide that's helpful. And then temperature. Temperature is a little different. Um, temperature actually will rise, that the photosynthesis levels will increase, and then it will hit this leveling off point, and then it will fall again. So it kind of has this ideal temperature that it likes to function in. And that's why you'll see in the fall our temperature is lower and we get less sunlight, um, and so those things cause the photosynthesis to slow down.
So two ways that some plants regulate photosynthesis through alternative pathways. Um, so we had C4 four plants and CAM plants. And basically they both regulate the stomata, which are um, pores in the leaves. And when they do that, they um, work they, they'll, they might absorb light during the main part of the day, but then they'll do a lot of their work at night um, when there's less chance of them um, losing some of that water from their stomata. All right, cellular respiration, if we go on to the next part, um, the equation for cellular respiration is going, going to be sugar plus oxygen produces carbon dioxide. plus water, plus energy. It's kind of the opposite of um, photosynthesis. So heterotrophs are organisms that eat things for energy. They can't make their own energy. Um, an example would be us. Describe the process of cellular respiration starting with glycolysis when there's not oxygen present and include the products and ATP made. So glycolysis is how it all starts. Cellular respiration starts with glycolysis no matter what. It always starts with glycolysis. Um, and in glycolysis it will make two ATP. It really makes four but it uses two so we get two ATP out of it. Um, it will also make a couple things that can be used later on. So some other things are NADH and pyruvic acid. And pyruvic acid will turn the Krebs cycle later when it's needed. Um, if we're going to go to the anaerobic pathway, anaerobic means no oxygen. So you're using a lot of energy, but you're not making any energy. And in that side, we're going to have lactic acid, and FADH2 and NADH. Those will get used later on. The process of cellular respiration starting with glycolysis when there's no oxygen present, or when there is oxygen present, aerobic pathway, and the amount of ATP used. So glycolysis is still the same. We just described that there. Um, aerobic means there's oxygen, so we have the Krebs cycle. And in this part, um, we make NADH, FADH2, ATP2, and CO2. And then we go to the electron transport chain. And here we get 34 ATP. So this is where we make a whole lot of energy. So total we can get 38 ATP out of cellular respiration um, if we go glycolysis, Krebs cycle, electron transport. But if you go to the um, lactic acid side, you'll make no ATP. Well, you'll get the two from glycolysis, but then no extra ATP. So if we put it all together, how the two processes studied are reliant on each other for survival of living organisms on Earth. Without photosynthesizers, we cannot have um, other living things. But without other living things, photosynthesizers would eventually die off as well because they need that carbon dioxide. So it is a um, continual uh, process. We need photosynthesis and we need cellular respiration for living things on Earth.